This episode of TechZilla is sponsored by NVIDIA, Netflix.com, and GoDaddy.com. Coming up on today's show, will our badass monster gaming PC boot? Jessica needs a microphone recommendation. Your BIOS is toast. And DIY bandwidth throttling to stops the jerks in your house from stealing all your bandwidth with their fracking torrents and quite a bit more. So grab the box of animal crackers and pour yourself a nice cold glass of milk because TechZilla starts now. Welcome to Texel. I'm Patrick Norton. I'm Veronica Belmont. Animal Cracker. I've got like lip gloss on now, so I can't. You know, I can't you can eat reapply lip gloss. Yeah, but I have to have my like Smell. healthy face on and the delicious. There we go. So we get our first. Oh, she's gone. Let's get our first video question up. Here's Rupert. Hello, Patrick and Veronica. It's Rupert from England here. Uh, I have a question about uh, my one megabyte ADSL line. My big problem with it is that it's split between three other people, including myself. And when I happen to be watching TechZilla or System, I find it gets massive amounts of lag. So my main question really is, how do I force my way into getting more bandwidth my way so I can watch TechZilla or System without any lag? I hope you can help. Well, naturally, Rupert, we want you to be able to watch TechZilla as unencumbered as possible. And the way to ensure that a certain amount of bandwidth is allocated to certain devices is by engaging in a bit of bandwidth throttling. Throttling, which is something that I engage in a lot around this set when I, <laughs> you know, go for There's them. no animal cracker crumbs on your lip gloss. Anyhow, to do this, let's assume that you're using a router that has uh, QoS, quality of service settings that you can change. Not all do, but a typical Linksys broadband router like the WRT54G has basic QoS settings, at least since firmware version 2.03.4, if you keep track of these things, which I know you do. Get your nerd on. <laughs> Links has just buried the settings under the Applications and Gaming tab, so there you can find them eventually. And under that tab, you'll be able to tweak things like the upstream bandwidth, device priority, Ethernet port priority, and the application priority, basically telling the router what's the most important device or computer application on your network and make it first in line for all your bandwidth. Yeah. I mean, so that's really nice. Generally speaking, once you set the device priority, you can skip the Ethernet and the application settings because, hey, you're probably not streaming video and making a VoIP call at the same time on the same machine. And if you are, well, spend some quality time with the Applications tab so you can figure out whether talking or watching your streaming video or talking on the phone is more important to you. Now, you want even more fabulous control over that box? Now, we should point out, we're, we're, we sound a little WRT54G centric, but there are so many of them out there. You can install. I'm going to say the first one. You want to say the second one? Okay. You can install the DDWRT or tomato firmware. Yes. So either, I just take your second one? Yeah, that was okay. I just like saying tomato firmware. Tomato firmware. Either one of them will give you a ton of support for throttling. There's a really good image gallery that Veronica found on Lifehacker that will walk you through step-by-step -step installing the DDWRT install process, which I highly recommend following because I have bricked routers and spent hours and weeks of my life recovering them. Really? Yeah. This router is really good. This is the one that you can get for like $60 and then turn it into like a really super high quality router, the $600 I own router. Two. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because I'm running I, that firmware on our router at home, or at least we used to. It's a, either one's good. A lot of people, DDWRT is kind of like the standard. A lot of people have been yelling in my ear recently about the tomato firmware. Either one of them are awesome. Like basically, once you got DDWRT running, you have a few choices. If you just wanted the router to give you a certain amount of bandwidth leeway, then just throttle by IP address, or even better, throttle by device, by the MAC address of the network device, and that way you don't actually have to set the IP or set a static IP for anything. Now, you can find your MAC address in Windows by using command prompt and entering IP config slash, no, IP config space slash all. You gotta have the space in there. That's important. Space is important. Because if you don't put the space in there, it's like, you suck, like you can't happened? enter in Windows commands. Exactly. Or looking at the physical address on your Mac. That's the other kind of Mac. The other kind of Mac. Is that why they call it? Is that why they call it physical address on an on an Apple computer? Because they don't want you to get confused Mac address and and Mac. That would be really funny. I'm just actually. joking. That was just a terrible. terrible they just got joke. me thinking about there. Personally, I think it would be easier to tell a DDWRT firmware to allocate a certain amount based on programs, like maybe whatever program you're using to stream TechZilla. You can choose programs in the services priority section. Yeah, and finally, I'm not sure what your relationship with your roommates is, but you might want to let them know that you're messing around in the router settings before you get started. They might be curious to know why their torrents suddenly aren't seeding all that well or downloading all that well, you know, yeah. that kind of stuff. Well, so hopefully that'll help you out. That's the nice thing to do. Also, I like your accent. It's cute. 
Anyhow, now it's time for our Netflix sponsored movie pick of the week this week from across the pond, Shooting Fish. This cute Brit comedy flick tells the tale of two orphans, one American and one English, who form the classic con man duo, using their wit and guile to eke out a comfortable living in Greater London. Their best laid plans are turned upside down when the newly hired help, played by a young Kate Beckinsale, needs their help to save an orphanage. Hilarity and fun ensue as the duo turn their talents away from selfish motives to more noble ones. Starring an equally brilliant Brit pop soundtrack, Shooting Fish is a great popcorn movie and evening rental. And don't forget to check out the other 89,999 titles Netflix has to offer, including Blu-ray, meaning you're bound to find any title you're looking for. Plus, with 40 shipping centers, almost all deliveries happen in just one business day, and shipping both ways is free. Plans start at $4.99, but as a tech seller viewer, you can get a free trial by signing up today at www.netflix.com slash Welcome to this week's freebie download pick, a free program that we find useful, fun, or incredibly interesting. This week's pick, well, we've got some free disk partitioning tools for you. Free non-destructive disk partitioning tools. In fact, not too long ago, if you wanted to resize a partition on your hard drive, partitions are the separate divisions on a hard drive. You might only have one that covers the whole disk, or you might have several. In either case, you either ponied up the cache for a commercial application, or you backed up all your data, resized the partition, and reinstalled everything. Because when you change a partition, unless you're using a non-destructive partitioning tool, you wipe out everything on the hard drive. Now there are some great free options for non-destructive partitioning. We've spent the most time with Gparted. It's a free tool for, quote, creating destroying, resizing, moving, checking, and copying partitions and the file systems that live on them. Uh, on Windows machines using FAT or NTFS, Max, HFS, and HFS Plus, along with a host of Unices, EXT, and journaling file systems. But a general hue and cry on Twitter led us to the most fabulous parted magic, which packs a pretty useful set of tools around the solid G parted partitioning tool in a bootable CD or USB thumb drive version. If you're a PC user, partitioning your drive is a way of life or will be as you get more and more leet. So check out these fabulous free tools if you're looking for a way to non-destructively resize that partition. If you're into retro gaming, especially retro PC gaming, listen up. Gary out in Tennessee wrote in with this question. I've got some old Micropro Spectrum Hollow Byte games that came originally as multiple floppy disks. I'd like to somehow get the installation disk converted to a CD so I can install and play on more modern machines. I foolishly tried just copying the disk contents to a CD and sure enough, the DOS install program thinks it's still on a floppy that needs disk 2 inserted after disk 1 runs and keeps looking for the A drive. Any ideas? Well, Gary, we figured we'd throw this one to Roger since he's caught in a video game time warp only playing games that came out in the early 90s. It's pretty much true. That's pretty much true. So, uh, yeah, I didn't really invest in new hardware for the longest time. Yeah, so what's the skinny on this one? All right, so what Gary needs to do is actually download an awesome application. Um, actually, I have one of the games he mentioned in his oh. email. I bought this at a uh, yard sale for 10 bucks. Nice. And like did, recently? Uh, no, I actually bought this six years ago, so wow. check this out. I know it has nothing to do with answering this question, but it uh, <laughs> has all the original manuals, has the discs, oh, look at those. has the warranty information, as well as the little uh, reference card. So, you know, it's a little bit of uh, PC gaming memorabilia. You know, can I see one of those? Yes. Oh, the floppies? These would make really great... Don't like, say coasters. Thank you. All right, so we're going to help Gary. Uh, he's going to have to download a really awesome application called DOSBox. Now, DOSBox was actually written for this express purpose. For people who have newer machines who have essentially Windows running on a PC and want to play older DOS games. Now, one of the issues with running DOS games in Windows is that there are a lot of hardware hooks that DOS games need that Windows generally does not allow, mm -hmm. especially uh, for sound cards to function. So you might get a game to play, but you won't have any sound with it, which is no fun. That's annoying. Now, for installation, a lot of these early games required, because the way they were written, were required to be installed from a floppy. So using DOSBox here, as you can see on the screen, I hope we can see on the screen shortly, uh, <laughs> You'll notice that I already took out the files that you need to install this game right here. You can see it. I put it in a folder called C slash DOS underscore games slash F15.3. Everything I need, including the installer. Now, if I double click the installer, it's going to run, but it's going to tell me that they I can't. Need a floppy. Yeah, it's going to need telling me I need a floppy, and it's not going to finish this process. So, using DOSBox, which is, by the way, is a free open source application. Oh, nice. That's I'm handy. Force this shut. Um, I first have to mount a drive. In this case, I'm going to have to mount an A drive. So I'm going to type mount A, and then I'm going to point to the directory that I want 
mount it as an aid, you know, as a floppy disk, as a pretend floppy okay. disk. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to point it to C colon uh, DOS underscore games slash F15 three. So you're pointing to the folder that everything's yep. living in. Now I need a C drive because I need a hard disk for this uh, to install to. So since I already have one, I am just going to say, I want you to mount it to slash old DOS games. Oops. And we should be set. You know what's hard? Typing. Typing on camera. No, it's typing on this notebook. Oh. The Sony Vile is actually really cramped on the keys, even though it's like a tremendously huge laptop. I actually have an easier time typing on my MacBook. I always mess up when I'm trying to type something on camera. Well, it didn't Without I fail. Anyhow, continue. Thank please. you. All right, so, all right. So, uh, <laughs> as you see, I I. DOSBox automatically puts you in a Z drive because that's the lowest uh, as far as you can go. I'm going to go to A. Ta da! And if I do a dir w, ta da! I have my install disk. Type install. Going to walk through the process. Install games to the hard drive. Choose A. Let's make this F15. Uh, actually, no. Yes. Uh, actually, let's not. Yeah. Let's just let's just do what it says. <laughs> okay. Now, as you can see, it's actually running the install process. It's installing it from one part of the hard drive to the other thereby fooling the system into thinking it actually has a floppy drive and going through it. So that part is done. And while that does its little magic, and uh, I want to escape from here. That's right, user interrupted. Exit to DOS, don't care, don't care. I already have this. All right, now let me go back to the folder. I actually have this installed already. As you can see, it installed everything into this DOS games that previously I installed this. That's everything I need. All I need to do now is to go to my C drive in uh, DOSBox. Let me go to C, F15, and do, do. I have all the files I need. And since I don't remember what I need to type, I'm going to do a dir on the exes and type F15. Ooh, English. Oh, <laughs> crap, the copy protection. You don't remember this uh, type of copy protection, do you? This is back in the day when copying floppies was a, was, was a pain for a lot of people. Um, so to make it easier, they would let people copy, but to make sure you actually owned it, you have to go through the manual and find and the correct words. page, right? Yes. Ha, see? See? It's this is what we did back in the Stone Age. None of your fancy optical disks. So uh, paragraph four, one, two, three, four, word two. Oh, it's French. Literally, it's the word French. <laughs> <laughs> so, hopefully, oh, Ooh. there it goes. Oh, that's amazing. So there I have the game running, and uh, let's quick start, see if I can uh, start this game. Oh, it's running, it's running, it's running. Little click, come on, come on, come on. Please run, oh, there Yay. we go. All right, so I haven't played this game in a while. Oh, there I go. As you can see, the DOS box actually is kind of chunky, but you can ad adjust the frame rate on it to uh, speed it or slow it up as fast or as slow as you need it to. Uh, for the most part, games run pretty well. There is a list at the DOS box site that indicates all the games that DOS games that will not run mm -hmm. on it, but for the most part, it runs like 90 plus percent of them, so you shouldn't have any problems. Now, if you want to run something like uh, the old Monkey Island games from uh, LucasArts, check out a uh, project known as ScumVM. ScumVM.org has a great interface. And essentially, you take all the disks that you have, you put it on there, automatically plays them right through the application. No problem. That is so awesome. Well, yeah. there you got your answer. Yeah. I want this at home. Do, do they only do they only work on on Windows PC, um, laptops? Believe it or, or PCs not, they right have now? an OS 10 version as oh, well as a nice. Linux version. Yes. So you don't need to be running Windows. You can be running uh, Linux, Ubuntu, or OS 10, and kind of get this. Although in OS 10, it's a little flakier because of the not way the hardware is set up. Exactly. Awesome. That's so cool. I think it's time we took another video email, however, and this one is a little more unusual compared to our previous voicemails. I mean, video mails, v mails, whatever. You'll see what I mean. Take it away, Jessica. You? Where did you come from? It's uh, television magic. Magic.
magic of television. Anyhow, Yay. that was probably the best use of uh, video in our video email we have yet received. If we gave Emmys, Jessica would definitely be a nominee in the awesome video mail category. Maybe we could give her a zilly. A zilly? Yeah. <gasps> that's a great, that's, zilly. That's funny. I like that idea. I like it better than techie. Yeah, zilly. So, so Jessica has a pretty crappy mic, mm -hmm. obviously, or not one at all. Or one that just doesn't work. Exactly. Um, so <laughs> All of which are bad. What are her options? I mean, there's oh, tons boy. of mics out there in the world. Okay, the built-in microphone on most notebooks is unusable. Too much fan noise, too much everything noise. Actually, same thing for most cheap webcams. You might not hear the fan noise, but they both have registers with cheap mics, too small mics or too far away from you. Now, most high-end webcams, like Logitech's QuickCam Vision Pro, actually have a really decent mic. But you know what? You put the mic three feet away from your mouth over by the monitor, it's generally not great for audio unless you like audio that sounds hollow. And if you're really hollow. lucky, create a, like a giant pile of feedback or echo on your speakers, which can just be magnificent when you're trying to record video on deadline. Yeah, I like to use a wired headset usually. Except, oh, absolutely. you know, you look kind of dorky, but the audio quality, especially on like the Logitech USB headset that I have, is really good. Mm -hmm. You can do that. You can tape it to your head with duct tape. That works also. <laughs> Plantronics makes some uh, Plantronics. Excuse me. Plantronics makes some decent uh, headsets that are on sale everywhere. Logitech's Extreme Super RL PC Gaming Head has a ridiculous name, but it sells for 13 bucks online, and it is highly reviewed by just about everybody. And it's a lot more subtle than Creative's Fatality or the E-Dimensional Audio <laughs> FX, both of which are also highly rated, but have big sealed cans over your ears, which give you that sort of help me Obi Wan. I'm wearing Danishes on my head kind of look. <laughs> mm, Danish. Or you can use the microphone like this puppy right here, but then you're going to have to get all that other kind of gear, yeah. like a you know a digital audio converter, that kind of stuff. So, so it's like 100 bucks for the mic and 150 right. bucks for a USB audio input I device that'll adjust the levels. Cheaper. Or you could get a not quite as good mic. Well, actually, cheaper. you know what's really good is um, Blue's Snowball. I like the Snowball. 100 bucks, USB input, excellent audio quality. Um, and actually, I had completely forgot about this um, Logitech, basically it's like silver USB connector, USB desktop microphone. That's pretty cool. Unfortunately named also, but 20 bucks and actually <sighs> sounds pretty good. It's a huge step up. Remember the cheap microphone that came with every PC back yeah, in the day? You just slap it on the side of the monitor and you're good to go. Yeah, except or for the whole part. We sound like this. Hi, I'm calling you. <laughs> You know what I mean? Not even, you know, it sounded awful before it got devoid for the camera. Um, but yeah, uh, Logitech USB, like 20 bucks or something similar. That actually is a pretty good one. Yeah. I'd still like headsets because I don't have to remember to speak into the proper area. Because if you like to like move you can around. You tap and do stuff. Yeah, yeah. My, my podcasting setup at home that I had was kind of annoying actually because it was it was just like I couldn't move around. I couldn't right. do things. I had to like keep my Because you had a professionally right positioned in front microphone. Of the microphone. Because I was using a, move. I was using a um, 57, right. which is more directional, which is. It's got like the cigar shape, right? Yeah, but I'm trying to think. It's not. If it's not omnidirectional, then what? Unidirectional? No, that's not. Non-directional. Cardio cardioid, I guess. Cardi it was. Cardioid. Cardioid. Anyhow, um, if you want to get nominated for a Zilly, which is our pretend awards for sending us in videos. Our imaginary <laughs> award. Our imaginary pretend award show. I want a Zilly on week. Techzilla. That would be a great swag, actually. Actually, Zilly, and then like, I want, okay, we'll see what we can do about that. Anyhow, send us in a video question. You can do so by putting up a video on the YouTubes, and make, it, make sure it's no longer than 15 seconds. Put video question in the subject line, and no freaking attachments. Okay, thanks, bye. And as an added incentive, <laughs> We still have boxy invites to give away, so just all you have to do is send us in a video question. You'll probably get a boxy invite, so that's pretty awesome. Don't be shy, send them in, and you might get an invite. It's now time to thank one of our sponsors, GoDaddy.com. Sure, it's not time for karaoke. I'm positive it's not time for karaoke. Web hosting, ladies and gentlemen. Web hosting from GoDaddy.com includes 99.9% .9 uptime, 24-7 support, and free access to the Hosting Connection, the place to install over 30 free applications sure to help you get the most from your hosting plan and your website. And you can transfer your domain to GoDaddy.com for as little as $6.99 and get a free one-year extension plus guaranteed renewal pricing. That's a great deal. Take a look. Your domain name may be getting renewed for a ridiculously inflated price. GoDaddy.com makes transferring easy and offers loads of extras, including hosting, a five-page site builder, complete email, total DNS control, and much more, all for as little as $6.99. What are you waiting for? 
How about a code? Yes, a redemption code. Enter in code TECH2, that's T-E-K-2 when you check out, and you'll save an additional $5 off any order of $30 or more. Some restrictions do apply. See the site for details, get your piece of the internet, and support us here at Techzilla by supporting GoDaddy.com and entering in that code. Looks like it's time for another website we just can't get enough of. A website that we just can't stay away from because it's too useful, too funny, or just too darn irresistible. Today's pick, Evernote. If you've been looking for a good on-the-go solution for remembering tasks or ideas, Evernote could be the system for you. It's essentially a storage bin for all different kinds of data. Websites, photos, notes, voice reminders, etc. Here's how it works. Say you're redesigning your apartment. First, make a notebook called Design on your Evernote page. This is where all your data will live. Then, when you're out and about shopping, you can use your mobile device to snap photos of furniture and mail them back to your notebook. Or if you randomly think of a great idea and don't want to forget, you can even send in a voice reminder that will be archived for you later. And once you're home again, using the Clip to Evernote plugin for Firefox or Flock also makes saving websites a one-click step, so you can archive sites for viewing later. But why use Evernote instead of just emailing things to yourself? The search. You can tag items on the fly and then sort them according to tags or when they were added. You can even view your notebooks offline using the desktop apps for both Mac and PC, which will sync up with the website when you get back online. But the coolest part about Evernote is that it will search within an image. If you have a sign or a menu that you want to remember, the recognition system within Evernote will locate that text for you. And as an iPhone user, there's a great free Evernote app that simplifies things even further. Uploading things on your iPhone will even give your notes a longitude and latitude of where you took the note. All right, a few weeks ago, we started the Badass Gaming PC Build, sponsored by NVIDIA here on the show. We were supposed to cover building it last week, but the parts arrived too late for the show, unfortunately. However, thankfully, all the gear arrived, and we're going to continue with the building today. Now, this is a pretty amazing gaming machine, but it's not going to be the most powerful machine on the planet. It's balanced enough to provide enough gaming mojo without resorting to exotic out-of-control cooling or umpteen cards that'll cost you more than a down payment on a pair of new cars. We did spend top dollar on the case. It's a Cooler Master stacker, and the power supply is pretty hardcore. It's a 1,000 watt unit from Corsair to ensure there's always going to be enough room and power on tap for any upgrades we want to make in the future. And okay, we went a little nuts and got dual 260s because since we're giving this thing away, we might as well sweeten the pot. Besides, NVIDIA's picking up the tab on this and, you know, they like video cards because, you know, they make games run fast. And the 260s, I gotta say, they're a fat deal compared to the 280s. And dual SLI is good. So, do we want to get do Roger? Do you want to get in here? Roger actually, we Roger lost the coin toss. So you got to put the machine yeah, in there. I don't remember a coin toss being part of it. I there was soft weeping because as like you started, you were like, eh, it's case, more like hey, eh. Patrick wanted to put it together and it heard silence for the next forty-five minutes. So I said, I'm I was bad. writing system show notes. Oh, oh, oh. Well, in any case, um, it actually in took any me. Case. In any case. <laughs> At least we know. You know. Any case, <laughs> I, I spent roughly two and a half hours putting it together. Now, one of the biggest challenges I had with it is because the case is designed to fit a multitude of boards. ATX, BTX, ETX motherboards, probably micro ATX. Yes, there were a lot of parts left over, and I thought I did something wrong initially because, like, where are all these parts supposed to go? And then I realized, oh, they're for all the other boards I didn't Heaven install. Heaven forbid he read the manual. <laughs> There's no fun in that. There's no joy in discovery in reading the manual. Yes, like you've read a manual first before you broke something. Just last year. <laughs> so, but the case is outstanding. It's actually big enough to accommodate literally both cards, a huge honk and power supply, and of course, as many drives as you want. We only have three hard drives in this particular a unit. mere three hard drives. Only mere uh, three. But um, as you can see from the video, it was a pretty, it was a pretty lengthy process. Um, but the benefits include, of course, a slidable or a removable motherboard tray, so you can take that out first. I laid out the MOBO. Uh, made yeah, sure it's I really heavily built. I mean, it's it's a heavy gauge aluminum out of all of this. It's Yeah, it's definitely not that cheap uh, flexi material that you normally get when you buy like a $50 PC case. I mean, listen to the door if I can even get it open at this angle. <laughs> Yes, it's it's like a car door That's almost. Clank. That's um, pretty good. Thud. <laughs> Take off a finger with that. I you know I put in the motherboard. I set up all the uh, the uh, spacers first. Put the motherboard in. Made a few adjustments to make sure that uh, I didn't do anything wrong, although I did because I was supposed to put the back end up first, but I did. <laughs> so I had to take it off and redo it. Um, suffice it to say, most of it was pretty straightforward. The biggest problem I had uh, were, of course, the little uh, front panel headers that you have to connect to the motherboard. They're really mm -hmm. small. My fingers are oh so sausage-like. Um, 
You need a little dainty lady fingers. Yes, I need dainty fingers or perhaps bony fingers or something like Where that. Where were you when we were putting this together? <laughs> the only thing I did not yeah, plug in to this was the power LED because it uses uh, a three, or actually a three spaced uh, header pin and there's only two available on the motherboard. So. We can fix that. <laughs> yes, I was thinking something along the lines of that, but I didn't want to get the rest of it put together. It's understandable. Firewire USB headers are all plugged in, so anyone who has a USB key or a Firewire drive they want to plug into the top, they can because nice. they all work. Next, uh, processor and heat sink. Processor, you know, it's pretty basic. As long as you match up the edges, drop straight in because it's as if, right. as your insertion force. Do not force these. I mean, if it doesn't fit the first time, do not press well, it this, in. I mean, the processor has the little flat work. spots on the bottom. It doesn't have pins, right? I, this uh, this is actually the, uh, the uh, that is correct. It actually has little divots more right. than flat spots. Um, so it should still fit uh, straight in if it should drop in right. and uh, fit securely. If it doesn't, it's probably There's a marked place. corner. Yes, and it's a little wedge. Right. So keep an eye out for that. Put the cop down and uh, put the, uh, secure it down. We used the Arctic Cooler, what's it, the Freezer Pro 7. You got rid of my fabulous Zalman. Uh, the reason why is because the Zalman, great cooling solution. But also the size of a small tree. It's really big, <laughs> but you also need the under bracket portion of mm -hmm. it. And by the time I figured that out, the board was already securely affixed to the motherboard tray. So Roger went the easy route and used the Arctic Force Pro 7 cooler. You just punch in the four corners, plunge it in, and it's set. And because it has the built-in thermal grease at the bottom, I don't even have to apply that. I mean, literally, it works great, it's cheap, and you know, you can be lazy about it. Just don't forget to plug in the tail for the motherboard, or actually the, the uh, CPU cooler, so the fan actually runs. And uh, it does use a special 4-1, 4-pin, one, uh, four because it needs to send back information to the motherboard so it can regulate the speed. Cool. Uh, put in the power from the awesome 1K Corsair <laughs> power supply. Put in one for the uh, CPU, because all these CPUs need extra juice. Put in the 22-pin for the motherboard. Four sticks of RAM. Four sticks of RAM. I think we have a 32-bit version of Vista, but you know what? You get a three and a quarter <laughs> out of the four. So, actually, you know what? You may not because uh, with the video cards that we used, that uh, memory address space is probably going to disappear. But in any case, you'll get three. Whoever wins it. Um, again, if it doesn't fit in correctly the first way, do not force it in. You just have to pull out the tabs on the side first, gently and firmly push it in, and if it click, doesn't, click. Yep all the way f uh, through for all four, and that is it. Power supply, the cool thing is this power supply is modular, so outside of the power that power leads you need for the motherboard and the two PCI Express ones for the video card, you plug everything else in. So depending on how many drives, how many devices you have, you can plug those along the way. Drives, depending on the case design, where you put these drives uh, will vary. But in this case, Cooler Master actually provides a little drive cage that will accept up to four uh, hard drives, in this case three. I put in the two Velociraptors at the top, of course spacing them carefully so there's adequate air flow between both of them, and put the one fat terabyte at the bottom because it's fat. And Velociraptors it get very angry if they're not adequately aerated. That's true, and they get very hot, and um, you don't and want them to, like yeah. Them. Well, there's actually a fan in front of them, so you want to make sure the air blows straight through. In any case, easy peasy, you put them in. Uh, even has little, you know, donut wedges that go between them to sound dampen and uh, cut down vibration. Awesome build. All right, finally for our drives, we went with the Blu-ray HDVD DVD burner combo. And this little baby sits at the top. And because this is a screwless case for the five and a quarter drives, all you need to do is stick it in and then tighten it using the tabs on the side that lock it into position. Now, um, all we had left to do was the video cards. Now, these 260s that Patrick so innocently picked up, or actually <laughs> requested, are huge. And I mean huge. They take up two slots individually. Yeah. Um, so I had to actually pull out four of the back plates <laughs> to accommodate them. And, Sorry about that. <laughs> um, suffice this to say, each one takes a six pin. Uh, PCI Express power, so I actually had to run two, two PCI Express <laughs> out to the video cards. A lot of juice, a lot of juice. Yeah. The 260s and the 280s consume an amazing amount of power. Uh, I believe it can light a small uh, town for at least a couple of weeks. Hence the 1,000 watt power supply. Finally, the sound card. I know there's built-in sound on the motherboard, the HD, blah, 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 whatever. Anyway, you know, the cable didn't fit for the header to the, to the uh, onboard sound. Mm -hmm. So it said, you know, let's forget about it. We'll just get an external sound card and use that as a convenient excuse for why I didn't plug it in. Well, you mean a discrete sound card. Discrete sound card. In this case being the X-Fi Titanium. 
Uh, it caught my eye because it's literally the one of the few PCI Express sound cards on the market. And I haven't tested one, and I figured, you know, guinea pig viewer. You get to win it. It's not like you paid for it. So it should be pretty awesome. <laughs> if you hate it, you can change it later. Finally. Yes. But, you know, it should be pretty cool. Uh, uh, it's actually built with Vista in mind. Uh, mm -hmm. The other X5s do have Vista drivers. However, they're severely abridged compared to yeah. the uh, XP drivers. So a lot of the functions you cannot get. There was a guy who did create a full set of drivers. However, the creative hounded him about Aww. it because he somehow made their product a lot more uh, um, functional functional oh, in Vista. That, yeah. In any case, um, so it should work. And finally, we plugged in everything. We plugged in the power to the drives, the SATI cables, and boy, are those SATI cables small. Like I said, I have Sasha's like fingers, really hard to put in, but I got it in, all working. I even tied it up using the zip ties or the little twisty ties. Mm -hmm. Well done. Thank you. I'm quite proud of myself. All about airflow management in case Roger yes. is. I'm sure whoever gets this is going to totally laugh at it and redo it when, they're, when it's like, oh, who put this together, a chimp? No, it would be me. <laughs> no, it was Roger. All right, the magic of the BIOS. Now, of course, uh, since this board has like way too much stuff in integrated onto it. You it's, pretty, it's a really comprehensive motherboard, yes. and the performance is really, really good. I'm going to disable the onboard audio. I'm going to leave all that. Mac config. What? Oh, <laughs> this is that's right. It's onboard two onboard NICs. It's crazy. I like that thought. Look at this. This thing has more options than my Buick I bought like five years ago. You've never driven a Buick in your life. Yes, I have. Check the system voltages. Uh, there it is. Ooh, Yay. look. See, it, it proves it's running because there's numbers <laughs> attached to it. Yeah, because the screen isn't proven up. Well, you know, you could fake it you in Photoshop. It lives. It lives. Um, you know what? I, 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 I consciously left out all the extra fans because it's pretty quiet as is. Right. And once those two 260s go up, I think they'll be pretty fast enough. But if whoever gets this and you want to be a little daring, yeah, you can overclock it. It uh, gives you whopping wave uh, functionality to uh, actually overclock. However, that being said, if you blow it up, brakes or anything, don't come crying to us. As we've said, we've handpicked some amazing components and put together a badass gaming machine that will be given away to one lucky winner. The winner will be announced on episode 47 on August 23rd. Of course, you can't win if you don't enter, so... If you want to enter your chance to win, surf on over to revision3.com slash badass giveaway and submit your name and email address. Now, we're going to have some details up in there about whether or not folks outside the United States can win that and what the conditions of winning it are. So do, your, uh, do yourself and ourselves a favor and read those before you enter. Speaking of gaming, NVIDIA is hosting a three-day visual computing show, including three uninterrupted days of gaming in an attempt at a world record-breaking GeForce LAN party, the 2008 Electronic Sports World Cup, and hundreds of thousands of dollars in cash and prizes. Sound cool? It gets better. We got a whole slew of other events, including a live taping of Dignation August 26th at 6 p.m. You want to attend? Go to www.envision2008.com to find out more of the details and to register for early bird rates. Then mark your calendar and get yourself to San Jose, California, August 25th to 28th for 55 hours of jaw-dropping visual wonderment. Come one, come all, come game with NVIDIA, and as always, support Techzilla by supporting our sponsors, including NVIDIA. We've substituted the fine co-host Veronica Belmont is normally used to working with with a large can of coffee. Let's see if she notices. Hi, Veronica. Ready to tackle more tough tech questions? I don't know how to respond to that. <laughs> <laughs> the funny didn't happen fast enough in my brain. I'm sorry. I don't think it was very funny. I think I made a poor no. and ill-conceived attempt at humor. Anyhow, we've got a couple more people <laughs> with questions. Our next cry for help comes from the fabulously named Splits. He says... Or she. Not really sure. <laughs> I recently purchased a Dell XPS laptop for college, and it came with a laptop case of sorts. And the way the case stays closed is with a couple of small magnets. In all my years, I've always been told that computers and magnets do not go together. Should I be worried about the magnets in this laptop case messing up the hard drive or the battery or any other part of the computer? Thanks. Splats. <laughs> so splits, I think you're safe, buddy. Uh, my yeah. MacBook's lid is also held closed by magnets. And now if we're talking about clamping a your MacBook, I have yeah. a MacBook Pro. Yes. I don't have magnets. You have like little latches. Yeah. But yeah, every MacBook Pro and actually quite a few other brands of, of uh, notebook actually have little magnets in the lid. And you mm -hmm. can hear them. It's like. When they sort of like. Shoop. Yeah, that last you little bit. That. And of course, it makes it difficult to pry it's open. Nice. 
Now, if you're talking about clamping a neodymium supermagnet to your hard drive, that's that's not so good, though. Unlike a floppy drive, you actually are safe to hold a USB thumb drive to your refrigerator with a magnet. Yeah, by the way, uh, neodymium magnets. Neodymium? Kind of Minimum. Minimum. <laughs> Minimum. <laughs> that one. <laughs> Anyhow, they're awesome. Uh, anytime you can buy a magnet so strong, it can't be shipped on a plane because it'll interfere with navigation gear. We get excited. It gets. Ex it's pretty exciting, isn't it? It's extremely exciting, and we want to throw out props to Wired for the heads up on <laughs> United Nuclear, a source of neo, however we say it, magnets, and the best place on the web to buy scary super magnets, not so scary nitrile wire, and of course, samples of nuclear isotopes for personal use. All right, one more question. <laughs> one okay. more question that does not involve magnets. Or nuclear. Isotopes. Or maybe it does. Will's looking for some water cooling help. He says, I currently use some top of the line fans to cool my CPU. However, it still gets quite hot. So I'm looking for some water cooling ideas, but I have no idea how to implement this cooling solution or what I should buy. I would really appreciate any input that you have. Thanks a lot, Will from England. I assume you also have a cute accent. Oh boy. <laughs> Patrick spends lots of quality time with water cooling on system earlier this year. Uh, basic water cooling with a kit in episode 48. Stupid water cooling by adding a car radiator in episode 54, if That's I a good recall word correctly. For it. Yeah. And in episode 56, he managed to drop his CPU's temperature by 10 degrees after spending 200 bucks on a high-end water block and pump. $213, actually. $213. $213. If you want to get specific. That last 10 degrees was super expensive. Your best bet is to make <laughs> sure you've got clean airflow inside your case. That's why Roger was routing all the cables on that case. Pick a good Zalman or Arctic cooling fan, heat sink combination for your machine, and use as little thermal paste as possible. Basically, clean up your chip and your heat sink with rubbing alcohol so you can't see any of the gray schmutz on there anymore, or the pink schmutz if it was pre-applied. Put a thin line of paste on it, and check this out. Check the instructions at Arctic Silver for your processor. It actually makes a difference where and how you apply uh, the goop, and you're probably Probably as That's good as you poop. need to be if you're in range for your processor. What looks hot to you and what might fry your skin is probably just fine for your CPU. You're looking basically the thermal envelope or thermal guidelines for your CPU. That said, if you want to get all jiggy with the water cooling, check out the forums at Petra's Tech Shop. They sell some serious water cooling gear and they're pretty generous with the advice and opinions, especially in their forum. And that's where we actually found all of the high-end stuff we spent so much money on to get that last 10 degrees of cooling on our processor. Me, at this point, I'm pretty good with the air cooling. Pretty good with the air cooling. Pretty good with the air cooling. We had some good uh, keeping your crap cool last time, <laughs> didn't we? <laughs> no oh, comments. someone actually found a Windows solution called um, fan control. I think it was just fan control for Windows. Should we show that off? Remember, because we were talking about SMC fan control for Mac. Yeah. Someone said there's a Windows solution that's very similar. We'll, we'll have to put that, that in the show week. notes. It's we'll talk thing. about it next week. We promise. Do we have time for one more question? I think so. Aston is bummed. He says the restore disk that came with his PC is scratches and he can't reinstall Windows XP Media Center Edition with it. Is there some way to install Windows on my hard drive without having to pay Dell for a replacement disk or network installation? Ooh. Okay. Aston, this is a great time to remind you and everybody else out there to store your program just in a safe place, preferably in a proper case. And if you haven't scratched your disks all the way through, you actually have the possibility of buffing the scratches out. Basically, if it hasn't gone through the shiny layer inside the disk, you can try to repair the disk by buffing the scratches out. I'm assuming you don't want to pay for a skip doctor or some Ugh. sort of cool guy fancy device. I don't like those. I like the toothpaste one, the you, toothpaste well, solution. Do you want to explain how the toothpaste solution works? Yeah, you works? just take a little toothpaste and you, you put it over the cut, mm -hmm. over the scratch, and it fills in the gap so the laser doesn't skip over. Right. Well, you basically actually use it to buff out the scratches. Oh, really? I mm -hmm. thought it, you did it to fill the gap, like mm -hmm. a putty. No. Really? Yeah. Can't really see through how does it. What, how does it buff? Well, there's... <laughs> it, it's de how does it buff? <laughs> Basically, there's like either baking soda or diatomaceous earth, which is a science oh. word I can actually say without hurting myself. Um, and that's what actually rubs the scum off your teeth. Diatomaceous earth actually is a very gentle... Uh, Abrasive you can use to buff the yeah. scratches out of disc. You want to basically buff from the inside to the outside because if, uh, if there was a CD right, if this was a CD, scratches that run this way are bad. Scratches mm -hmm. that run on the sort of from the center to the outside of the disc are okay. Now basically, so you sit there mm. and you try to buff the scratches out. You've got your soft, wet rag and you're working your toothpaste. And if that failed miserably, you can check to see if a local movie rental shop or UCD shop has a commercial disc de scratch, they'll charge you like five bucks for it. And if that fails, it's probably time to call Dale. <sighs> you know, I feel like that was one of those things where, you know how you just assume the way something works your whole life? <laughs> And you're like, this is obviously the best reason that that would be an appropriate method to use. I just kind of went with that forever. It's okay. 
You know, I thought it was a pretty reasonable solution. You should have talked to me about where I thought electricity came from. Oh, I'd love to hear that story. Not on the show. <laughs> Not while the tape's rolling. Um, getting back to Aston's problem, I hate recovery disks. I prefer a discrete set of operating system install disks, so hopefully Microsoft will hook you up. Their policy is really simple. Microsoft will replace one version of the originally purchased software with one genuine OEM version of the same software. They've got a whole page, actually they have a whole page on how to replace Microsoft software or hardware, order service packs and product upgrades and replace product manuals. So if you actually want to get uh, so like your service pack shipped to you on a disk, this is the page to go to. You're looking for the media replacement for end users of System Builders page and basically ask nicely. You might need to provide a receipt because they basically think it's Dell's responsibility, but if mm -hmm. you ask nicely, they might send you a disk and you're gonna have to pay shipping and handling and it's probably a small fee for the disks, not to be a jerk, but you trashed the disks or you lost the disks, so why should they pay for what you lost? Because stuff happens sometimes. And, and it would be, stuff happens. It would be very generous of Dell or of anybody else to actually pay for Microsoft. the disks that you lost. Microsoft. <laughs> Dell, Microsoft, Whatever. Apple. So can't win. You can win. No, you can't. Never? Nope. Well, for all of you watching, we love in your emails <laughs> or your questions. So email us, text revision 3com Check out product reviews, how-tos. You ask us, we'll do it. Speaking of which, we're working to set up a trip to SEMA later this year. And, of course, we'll do our annual visit to CES because we have gotten a metric ton of emails talking about both those shows. We are going to CES? We are going to CES. Really? Yes. I thought maybe I wouldn't go this year, but now I'm happy because I do get to go. Well. I don't know why I assumed I just wouldn't be going. But. Into the van, we're going to CES. Road trip. Woohoo! That's exciting. Yeah, we usually drive to CES. What? Ostrich burgers in Bakersfield. Are you kidding? You drive? Yeah. You've oh, never driven to, to Vegas? No. Oh. <laughs> can, can I just what fly? What about video questions? <laughs> can I just fly? Can I just meet you there? Let's talk about I'll it I'll be later. like at the pool with a Mai Tai. Playing uh -huh. being like, yeah, you guys have fun with your ostrich burgers. We work at CES. We'll be hanging out. Yeah, because I never worked when I was doing it for no CNET or in Gadget. Yeah, I never like worked at all when I was at CES. <laughs> you jerk. <laughs> Anyhow, send us in your video questions so we can see your pearly whites on screen. You ever had a Mai Tai when you were at CES with CNET? Ever? Have No, wait, are you saying I did work or I didn't work? I can't decide if I'm mad work. at you or not mad at you. You're not gonna, when have you ever had time to have a Mai Tai at CES? Never. Why would it be any different with us? I mean, we're I know, I'm assuming. I'm just saying because I was waiting for, for you to show up. And Molly. Oh. That's what I meant. God, you're so judgy. <laughs> Anyhow. There was no judging. My Load up drinker. those video questions on YouTube and send us a link. Cool sitter. Like I said, no attachments, please. It's hard on our email servers, and we won't look at them. So there. Hmm. As always, you can visit our forums at revision3.com slash forum, and you can find out more details on the website. And make sure to catch the latest episode of System. Woohoo! That's your show. August is Home Theater Month on System, and they're kicking it off with a visit to the Dolby Labs. That's so cool. It was fun. I'm so jealous. Anyhow. We, we sat in the most amazing room ever to watch movies in. Oh! That's just the first installment. Uh, you won't want to miss out on what they have lined up. So head over to revision3.com slash system, and this week's release is up there right now. It's basically, we, give, we, we talk to the experts and get all the tips and tricks for configuring uh, your speakers for the best surround sound possible. So jealous. Not as jealous as I am of you at the pool with a Mai Tai. Thanks so much <laughs> for watching. I'm Patrick Norton. I'm Veronica Belmont. Until next time you've been watching. Texilla. I like that thought. Mai Tai. Mai Tai. Right. Nom nom nom. <laughs>